So what was it that was designed 160 years ago and still gets used by homesteaders in America? Today, you're gonna find out. You know, growing up as a kid, there was one thing I really wanted. It was a lever action repeater. You know, the ones used in the movies by John Wayne in movies like True Grit or Sons of Katie Elder. In fact, Sons of Katie Elder was one of my most favorite movies as a kid growing up. And it was because of so much of those lever action repeaters in so many of the pivotal scenes that me as a young boy, I, I grew up wanting one of those more than anything else in the world. Check out some of these scenes. Wait a minute, kid. We're gonna need a doctor. Go get Doc Isdo. That's it, Harry. It's far enough. There's not a lot that's more Americana than the lever action repeater. Let's take a look at the ones I have. So these are my two lever action repeaters. They hold a special place in my heart. And that, it's not just because of how I acquired them. Um, it was also because of the history behind them. Again, there's no other part of Americana that you can own uh, than these right here that just have so much history behind them. And things, you know, that these types of repeaters were involved in when it came to shaping how our country uh, was uh, was founded and just uh, the turmoil that existed in the founding of this country and how the West was settled. Just so much history in these firearms. So um, what I want to talk about first is both of them, uh, there's a Marlin, the, low, the one on the bottom is a Marlin, the one on top is a Henry. And I know some of you, uh, and I was the same way, was you know, when it comes to a lever action repeater, it's got to be about Winchester, Winchester, Winchester. Well, I'm here to tell you that all repeating lever actions are, in fact, Henry's. They're not Winchester's. Uh, it was Benjamin Henry, uh, the namesake of that one right there, who invented the lever action repeater. He is the one who came up with it. He took a design um, that was uh, formerly in a pistol and then reworked it into this lever action repeater. And that's what became famous. It was known as the Henry uh, repeater. And that Henry repeater, the patent for that, he created the patent and then it was sold to Winchester. And so it was Henry. <laughs> it was Henry, Benjamin Henry, who first created the lever action repeater and whom all other lever action repeaters were designed after. So um, when he designed the lever action repeater. Winchester bought out the patent. Uh, it, it went on for a while and was known as the Henry rifle. And then uh, uh, by 1883, or eight, I'm sorry, 1873, I believe, then all of the other lever actions became known as Winchester's because Winchester changed the name of the company. He changed the name of the repeater. And now you have everything being called Winchester. And so uh, the Henry became known as the Yellow Boy because the Native Americans nicknamed it that. They loved the brass receiver that you see there and the brass parts that were on it. And so they named it Yellow Boy and the Yellow Boy uh, name just stuck with the Henry rifle. And then, uh, you know, if, about a decade or so later, uh, the golden uh, brass uh, receiver was changed to uh, more of a steel looking receiver. Uh, but it became known as the Yellow Boy. In fact, if you didn't know, uh, the reason uh, the Sioux Indians won that battle at Little Bighorn against George, General George Custer was because the, it was the Sioux Indians that were armed with the Henry rifles. And uh, the, the, the Custer's men, the U.S. Army men, were actually only armed with single action uh, Springfields. Uh, so, I'm sorry, single shot Springfields. And so it was basically the, the, the Sioux outnumbered, outgunned uh, George Custer's men. And that was a big, 
uh, uh, big event for uh, just how effective, effective these lever action repeaters could be. And so anyway, this became the top thing that I wanted as a kid growing up. I wanted a lever action repeater because I saw them in movies, John Wayne, so many other places, there are so many other actors in movies uh, showcase these, 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 uh, these rifles. And so I wanted one. And so I guess uh, sometime shortly after I was married, I uh, was going through a, a shop and I saw this on the rack and it was chambered in the exact chambering that I wanted. And it was a trapper. You'll notice that these are more short than some of the other ones that you have other models that you'll see on the market. I wanted the trapper version. I wanted the short version. Number one, because I like to trap. Um, and it was just something that I, I thought related better to me because I, I enjoyed trapping when it came to beavers and raccoons, things like that. And so I wanted the trapper version. And so that's what I got. I got the trapper version in 357 and 38 special. And so that was the first one I picked up and uh, I've, I've treasured it ever since. And then uh, a number of years ago, um, a friend of ours passed away and uh, his wife uh, wanted to get rid of his firearms. And so she contacted me and asked if I would want any of these. And one of those was a Henry uh, uh, Big Boy uh, chambered in 357 38 Special Trapper version. Uh, and I was like, yes, uh, I definitely uh, can take that off your hands. I, it's just a beautiful uh, piece. And um, it's just a piece of, again, Americana uh, with the namesake of the inventor who originally came up with the lever action repeater. And so that was something I really wanted to add to my collection. Uh, it was first offered to a friend of a friend of mine, and he decided he just didn't want it. He, could, he couldn't couldn't uh, uh, pick it up fast enough because he was living in another state. And so I was like, okay, I'll take it. And uh, so now it, it's part of my collection. Uh, the Henry. This is made. Both of these are made in the USA. Okay. Interesting facts about uh, the history of, on on these repeaters is that. Marlin came out with his. It was John Marlin and Benjamin Henry. Benjamin Henry invented the lever action repeater. John Marlin ended up create, recreating it, taking that design um, and then making it more suited to handle larger caliber ammunition. So uh, lar bigger bore ammo so that it could take down uh, larger animals and then also shoot at greater distances. And so by the 1880s, John Marlin was pumping out uh, different uh, bigger bore uh, lever action repeaters and the Henry was then by that time named the Winchester. Anyway, a lot of great interesting facts on this. I highly recommend if you're interested in learning about the lever action repeater, uh, do a lot of YouTube, YouTube, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there on this. There's lots of uh, Wikipedia pages, History Channel uh, videos and stuff like that on this. But it, it, again, it's just a great piece of Ameri Americana. And both of these are really well made. Uh, they're just very stout. Um, Marlin, I know they went through some hard times. I believe in the uh, mid 2000s, uh, when they were being restructured, they ended up actually being sold to Remington, and Remington restructured them and tried to get their tooling in just a, a better, a better uh, uh, way to to just to make a better quality product. And so uh, Remington has kind of uh, redone the Marlin. Uh, brand and they are really putting out some really good quality uh, firearms now uh, but back in the 2000s some of these just weren't up to snuff uh, but overall for the majority of its history marlin has put out some really good lever actions and uh, the henry this henry uh, the, the company it's actually called uh, the henry arms company i think and this company is made in the usa and also made in the usa of course and then but it's it's not in any way connected to the original Henry. Uh, the original Henry, John, uh, Benjamin Henry, worked for uh, Winchester under the New Haven, New Haven Arms Company, and that was basically uh, restructured into Winchester, which was then restructured into U.S. Repeating Arms Company, and now all Winchesters are owned by Fabrique Nationale, which is a Belgian company, so all the Winchesters, for some of you guys out there that are it's Winchester or nothing. I'm sorry, all your Winchesters are now made by the Belgians, Fabrique Nationale. None of them, they may be made in America, but they're owned by the Belgians. And uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, like, I like the fact that these are both made in America, owned by American companies with lots of American history behind them. And so these are true 
Uh, all, in fact, I, I make the case. I make the case that all lever actions are Henry rep lever action repeaters. Okay, if it wasn't for Benjamin Henry, uh, the lever action would may not have ever come uh, to, into being. Uh, but this was something uh, that was created here in America, and so many Americans today are using this um, still today. So just to be totally upfront, this Marlin uh, lever action repeater is the grocery getter for my family. This actually has uh, brought home more venison than anything else that I own. Um, and so every year, I, I usually I have a 308 that I, I use often for, for hunting, but this is something I can easily pick up, um, you know, throw it in the back of the truck. I don't have to worry about the scope getting knocked off, whatever. I use the iron sights, and um, I can usually, I, a lot of times I'll pick it up in rainstorms because then I can stalk on deer and they don't even hear me coming. Uh, but and it's great out in rainstorms as long as you take it home and then you oil it really well. And so it's seen a lot of wear and tear. It's been in the brush. Uh, these are often called brush guns for a reason because they, are, they perform in the brush and people count on them to perform in the brush. And so that's what I've used it for. I've used it for oftentimes and I like the, sh I like the fact that it's a short barrel trapper version. It's really easy to carry. It's pretty lightweight and um, it's very effective at taking deer. But then why 357s? Why do I choose 357? Well, historically, actually, if you didn't know, uh, Frank and Jesse James often preferred um, uh, Winchester uh, lever action repeaters and the reason they preferred uh, the lever action repeater was because they could get one in a chamber, the same chambering that they could get for their, for their pistols or revolvers, their single action revolvers. And so Frank James of Jesse and J Jesse James, uh, he stated often that the reason he chose that was because he wanted to have interchangeability with ammunition between the two platforms, pistol and rifle being able to share the same ammo. And I think that's really smart. It's, really, it's a really smart idea because if you have ammo that can interchange between both a rifle and a pistol, I mean, you've heard that old saying, right? A pistol is only for shooting your way to your rifle that you should have had with you in the first place. I love that saying because it's so true. A rifle is way more effective. And so your pistol is for shooting your way to your rifle that you should have had with you in the first place. And if the, if the ammo is interchangeable, all the better. So Frank James was made famous uh, for saying that. I think it definitely holds true. I have no idea why some of these people chamber in some of these weird calibers like 300 Blackout or 6.5 Grendel. Or, it's like, what, what are you doing? Where are you ever going to find that ammo if you really need it? And, you know, things are hard to come by. You're never going to find that ammo and you've just rendered whatever tool that you have useless. So I, I don't get that at all. But uh, that, that's wisdom even though he was a bank robber, <laughs> Frank and Jesse James uh, knew what they were doing on that, on, that, on that account. But Zach, but Zach, don't you think 357 is just too small of a round for bringing home the venison? Actually not, because a 357 pistol round has a completely different velocity than a 357 coming out of a rifle. You have about a 40 to 50% increase in velocity coming out of a rifle, this Winchester, I'm sorry, the Henry repeater, lever action repeater, than you will coming out of a pistol. So it's a faster moving bullet coming out of a rifle. Why? Because that gas that's burning inside the barrel has, a, has more time to build up pressure, which pushes the bullet faster. And so you're going to have more velocity that way. And so it makes it a, it makes it a perfect uh, deer uh, harvester at that point. And I've never, I've never, I mean, every deer that I've ever hit with one of these has gone down. I've never lost a deer by hitting it with 357. In fact, uh, my target of choice on a deer is its neck. And usually upon impact, the impact that 357 bullet will go ahead and, and break the neck of that deer. And you will, um, you'll have the deer. He'll be laying right there where you hit him. So it, it basically instantly breaks the neck. And he doesn't even know what hit him. He just lights out. And so down he goes. And so a 357 is just perfect for, uh, for bringing home the venison if that's what you want to use it for. So with all that said, I think it's time we go ahead and... Do you smell that? I smell it. It smells like corn syrup. It's that time of year again. They're starting to move. We got to do something about that. But before we get to the range, we need to talk about something else. So YouTube, if you don't know, hates these kinds of videos. So if you would like to support the channel, because uh, obviously videos like this, doubtful, we will be monetized. Uh, you can check us out over at patreon.com slash an American homestead, where we have behind the scenes videos just for our patrons and patrons alone, and some other videos too that are not behind a paywall that you can check out. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and see if on Patreon, if this 357 can take out this two pound block of Tannerite. 
two pound block of titanite. Now they would suggest that 2,000 square, I'm sorry, 2,000 feet per minute is what is the minimum requirement for taking out tannerite. I believe it's 2,000 feet per minute, 2,000 FPS. But from what I understand, the bullet leaving this barrel, because of the increased velocity, is just at about 1,900 feet per second. Okay? Now, <laughs> So if that's the case, is it going to blow it or not? Well, you won't know unless you join Patreon. So for just a dollar a month or even five dollars or ten dollars a month, you can come over to Patreon, support the channel, because places like YouTube don't, and you can feel good about the fact that you're making these, these videos possible. So go ahead, check us out, patreon.com slash American Homestead, and you can watch the video to see whether or not this 357 round will blow this two-pound canister of tannerite. All right, guys, let's go get some corn syrup. You know, some people have asked me, Zach, how come you don't have more subscribers on YouTube? Well, it's because I do videos like this. YouTube will demonetize my videos, they keep them from showing up in search results, and they will even unsubscribe um, and take off the notifications from my videos and unsubscribe my viewers. Uh, it actually happens, and people have told me this multiple times that they've been unsubscribed from my channel. Um, and it's because really we talk about things that other homesteaders will not talk about. You know, you go back a hundred years from right now, a hundred years or, you know, let's just say 115, 120 years ago, 120 years ago, there was not a homestead on the frontier that did not want a lever action repeater. But it's something today that homesteaders can't talk about. Otherwise they risk being demonetized and marginalized by uh, the people who post their content. That's pretty sad. Uh, because really it's a part of history. You know, and history is important. You know what, I think we're getting close. I can start, I'm starting to smell. I am starting to smell the corn syrup. It's getting stronger. Oh yeah, okay. I think I see it. Hold on, this, is, this would be a good place to stop. I think he's dead. Well, I think we got them all. There may be a few stragglers laying around, but we'll get those guys later. All right, guys, if you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe if you haven't done that already as well, and then make sure you check us out over at patreon.com slash American Homestead to see the fate of that two pounds of tannerite and see if it works. Uh, and other great behind the scenes videos that you won't find anywhere else here at the Homestead. All right, guys, see you next time on American Homestead. Hey, hey there, thanks for watching our channel. If you're looking for great off-grid homesteading videos, this is the channel for you. Hit that subscribe button and be sure to like the video you just watched. You can also feel free to send us your questions by going to anamericanhomestead.com on our contact page and send me your question. Your question might get made into a video. In the meantime, check out some of these other great videos. Oh wait, go ahead and click them. Go ahead. <laughs>